A few months back, I reached out to a bunch of YouTube mead makers with a proposition. Let's all get together on a Zoom call and come up with some ingredients and try to brew with the same ingredients and see what different paths all those different meads take. So this is part one of our series called The Great Mead Project, where you'll get to see the brainstorming session of coming up with the ingredients that we brewed with. And then if you take a look in the description of this video, you'll find a playlist with links to all of the videos as they come out on all of their respective channels. So this week, look forward to 10 different videos, all featuring the ingredients that we decide upon in this video here. And then check back in a week and we'll have a wrap up video where we all got back together on Zoom and discussed what went right. And in some cases, like mine, what went wrong. So enjoy this video and make sure to check out all the mead makers involved and subscribe to their channels and give them some support. I've invited mm -hmm. you all to be a part of this, but I, I felt like it would be cool for everybody to like briefly kind of give, uh, give us all your 60 second sound bite. <laughs> I'm Nina of Rag and Bone Meadery. I started making mead because I'm a huge medieval nerd. Me and my partner, John, are both huge medieval nerds. We do the SCA and LARP and all that stuff. And so it's just a part of the culture to just be drinking meat all the time. So I'm Amanda or Faye or whatever works. Um, so I have Faywood Mead is my channel name. And I don't know, I, I guess I, I started mead making because my family did it, <laughs> I guess. That's like how I was introduced to it is, um, is my family. So like the first time I ever had mead was mead that my mom had made, which was pretty cool. And, um, and I had just wanted to make it for forever. And then finally I did. And then the rest is history. <laughs> I got into mead making uh, in 2013 from uh, being a fan of like fantasy and sci-fi and wanting to try it and I couldn't find any. So I said screw it and made it and loved it. Uh, I've been making mead ever since and I decided to start a channel where I take the descriptions of mead in these sci-fi and fantasy media, you know, going back to my roots and try and figure out what I would do to make them. I'm Dave Hodgkins. Uh, I've got a channel called Hanging with Hodge. I actually started off making uh, wild game cooking videos uh, over on a different channel uh, called, uh, what's that one? Uh, Hodge the Hungry Hunter. <laughs> so, yeah. so I've got a bunch of videos over there on uh, uh, cooking wild game. Uh, and then um, I ran out of recipes there. And my sister said that she was making meat. And I said, oh, I like meat. I can I can do this because I'm also a very cheap person. Yeah. I think it, I could make it cheaper than what I could buy it for. Okay. I'm Jordan. My channel is heir to the mead. Cause I also like puns. Um, <laughs> <laughs> actually also an SAA person. So hello. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I'm the newest channel here. So I'm uh, maybe kind of still finding sort of like my niche a little bit. Um, but I think some of what I'm currently doing is, um, here are, here are dumb things I did, so you don't have to. <laughs> uh, that can be like a like a homebrew retrospective where it's like, well, this brew didn't go very well. I'm not going to make a video as a recipe because you probably shouldn't brew this, but I'll, I'll tell you why I think it went wrong. Try to do an analysis on it, a postmortem, if you will. Um, or even if they went well, you can still do retrospective. Um, or the uh, the crazy yeast experiment where I put like a pound of <laughs> like a pound of yeast in a gallon to see what would happen, and it it still has not cleared. By the way, if anybody was waiting for an update on that one, so it's still completely opaque. <laughs> my name is Charles. Uh, purpose of my channel DIY fermentation was basically uh, just to chronicle my adventure into uh, learning how to make wines. Um, I wanted to keep it at a very, very simplistic level, such that the novice winemaker who doesn't know a thing about making wines, who doesn't know anything about yeast, doesn't know anything about, 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 about yeast energizers or nutrients or, or, or DAP or any, any, of these, any of these additives that are being added to the wines, who wanted to have a simple way of starting to make wine by getting everything they needed to find at the grocery store. Hey, I'm Carlos. Uh, I run uh, Texas Longhouse Mead. I, uh, I got turned into me way back when uh, <laughs> from a 
religious standpoint, I guess you can call it. I uh, had a guy who was teaching me how to make me several years ago, and uh, his way was more of the ancestral, ancient way. Where, you know, just throw the whole fruit in, just throw you know the the twigs and everything in, and uh, we asked him about nutrients and stuff like that. He's like, "Oh, you don't need all that. You'll get it from all this." And you know, tasting some of his stuff, I was like, "Man, this is harsh." So I joined a couple of the Facebook groups and Reddit and stuff like that, and see what people are asking. Like, I'm going to do a video on that one. Yeah, I've been making for uh, a couple of years. I'm watching doing the most. I man made meat forever. And um, I met Brave, uh, Brave and Art from Brave's One Month Mead, and he's been sort of mentoring me and uh, the whole One Month Mead thing, which was nice. My name is Garrett. I run a channel called Man Made Mead, where I make a bunch of random mead video series from um, Can It Be a Mead to, um, I mean, mead shootout, yeast shootouts to everything that I can possibly put up that's not only educational, but hopefully entertaining. So um, I've been doing this for four plus years and I still love doing it. So awesome. I'm BC. I'm from doing the most. Uh, Anna and I have a tendency to do the most and it has become, <laughs> it's become homebrewing centric uh, over the last couple of years. We got niched. So here we are. So the goal would be to come up with a set of ingredients, not a style, not a, not a body strength, but just a set of ingredients. So I was thinking like three. Is there anything anyone wanted to brew with and hasn't found a reason to? Uh, corn. Oh, uh, There's a lot of sweet corn in Jersey. <laughs> corn? <laughs> yeah. No, if you distill it. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> I'm partial to corn because I am currently saving corn cobs to do a depression era corn cob wine. Huh. And so That's... I've got a, a lot of corn <laughs> to get through. I'm getting ready to do a video on, uh, I'm going to call it a dango mango mead. And I came up with this. We we're out at Hocking Hill State Park a couple weeks ago. Um, with some friends and I brought some of my mango meat with us and he picked up some uh, pineapple rum, Parrot Bay pineapple rum. And we mix in the mango meat is good. It's like, oh, wow, this is, this is really nice. I like this. We added in that pineapple rum. I'm like, dang, this is really good. So maybe something along the line. I'm thinking like uh, the mango and pineapple. You know, I'm thinking I'm liking that, that mango concept. It turns out that one of my most popular videos to date has been my mango wine video that I made over a year ago. I've uh, never really considered the possibility of using mango in a, in, as a mead before. Uh, yeah, so that might be workable. Mango and mead is really good. When I made six gallons and it disappeared in two days. Two days. <laughs> Funny how fast it goes. Two days? What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it it disappeared. Like I had a like I, I have one flip top bottle left that I, uh, I saved because it was really good. <laughs> okay, so I, I'm into the idea. How do you feel about bingo? That's great. I like that one. When we made that mixed cocktail, it was like, dang, oh man, go mead. I know. I'm, I'm, to make a tropical. I'm actually still liking the idea of corn. <laughs> Yeah, corn. I, corn is a. Uh, I have a friend who's Brazilian, and she has like this love of this Brazilian ice cream or corn ice cream. I don't know. I corn can be sweet, you know. I don't know. Corn and mango. <laughs> no, I don't know. I, I'm feeling it. I think the corn would add some body. Like, yeah. <laughs> I imagine it to be one you have to basically mash. Like they would for distillation, and then uh, that way you convert the starches into the sugars, and then use the sugars. So you take yeah, take the corn, boil it down, mash it up, strain it off, so that way you convert the sugars, and then use that water. Mm. Oh, well, I'm sure we all have our ideas of what to do. <laughs> we can. I'm, gonna, I'm yeah. gonna add corn to the parking lot. <laughs> 
we can workshop that. Um. Is anyone uh, familiar with Chamoy or Tahin? No. no. Yes, I love Chimoy. some Tahin. Chamoy is, is like a like a red sauce that you can get from like the um, like like Latin or Mexican section of the grocery store usually, and um, it, I guess in Mexico it's kind of a, a pretty common like snack or or almost dessert to get like mango with chamoy and tahine on it. Tahine's like a spice. Mm. And then you just like mm. eat it that way. So um, they also do it on like oranges and stuff. And I've also seen them do it on beers around here sometimes. You go to certain restaurants and order a beer, they'll ask if you want it loaded. They'll put the chamoy just straight up in the beer and then they'll do the rim in tahine instead of like salt or something. Yeah. I like the idea of spicy with mango and corn. Mm. Uh, something like elote, <laughs> like mango. So... Maybe like a pepper? I think a pepper like, would be good. Like a, a hot pepper, like a, yeah. just a chili pepper. Mm. Do we want to say what type of pepper? No. Or just I think it's more fun pepper. if we yeah. decide. Okay. Uh, but just a hot pepper or I'm sorry I mentioned oh, corn. God, <laughs> no, I love it. I really love I really love that idea. <laughs> oh no. Uh, the, the one brew I want to do next is a pineapple chipotle. You take the pineapples, throw some salt, brown sugar, caramelize them in, in like on the smoker, and then throw some chipotle peppers into it. Somebody mentioned it to me a while back, and I'm like, ever since then, it's all I can think about is doing a mango chipotle. I'm just trying to figure out a good way to do it. Mm. That sounds good, too. Oh, yeah. Is this, is this the list? <laughs> Okay. I mean, we need honey. I mean, oh, yeah. yeah. So. I think that one goes without saying. <laughs> Do we want to choose a varietal? As one uh, of the I things think... you mentioned is keeping it with what Charles said, is making it easily accessible from a grocery store. Yeah. I think now, maybe um, that grocery store is Amazon. I think one of the good things that I am looking forward to about this is getting 10 completely distinct different meads out of this. Do you have any other thoughts? I feel like for the sake of us having the, a similar product, we have to do the same honey varietal, at least roughly. Obviously, every honey is going to be different in some distinct way. But if one of us uses avocado blossom, another person uses blueberry, like it's going to be very different. But mm -hmm. I just wonder if that would keep it closer to home. Everyone keeps talking about stuff you can get from the grocery store. But I, I, keep on, I keep on thinking bread yeast. Oh, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, I mean, it, you can get it from the grocery store, and you know, it's readily available. Your your grocery store doesn't carry these little packets of Kuvike that you can just pick up in the. <laughs> I, I I don't think growing so. aisle. <laughs> yeah, I like the idea of either like a wildflower or clover, just to keep like an even base. Because like with mango and corn and peppers. Uh, there's uh, so many ways to work with that, I guess. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, well, yeah. Oh. Look good. It looks good. <laughs> like what's happening. I don't know. So, how about we just say wildflower or clover? Yeah. Okay. That way, if you got some bomb ass clovers wherever you're at, you can. <laughs> <laughs> you can go that route three ingredients we've got the honey mm -hmm. the only other things i think we should probably do whatever yeast we want i, I know eric's into bread yeast but somebody <laughs> <laughs> somebody might be making a session meat somebody might be making a yeah 20 percent step bed situation yeah. mm. i'd hate to lock anybody in wait wait so so that was yay or nay on the bread yeast um, I think if you want to, you're, you're using bread yeast. <laughs> You've locked yourself into bread yeast. I think that's what happens. Yeah, it will be bread yeast. <laughs> okay. Any other thoughts? No, I like that list. Uh, I think leaving it open from here is probably the move. Yeah. This is not what I thought we were going to. I thought we were going to be doing like a maple and blueberry type. <laughs> <laughs> and there are a lot of different paths. That you can go down especially with the corn yeah well, I mean, that's corn. like the surprise uh ingredient in mm -hmm. the list here and i love it so much yeah. there's so much that can be done with it 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't wait to see 10 completely different yet somehow reminiscent meads. <laughs> <laughs> One thing to know about mango, you're not supposed to ferment the mango skins. So just in case anyone here doesn't know that, apparently it can create some kind of toxicity uh, that some people are sensitive to. So it's good. that's good to know. Yeah, good to know. Uh, so timeline, do we want to try and have these done November-ish? No, that seems sure. reasonable. Yeah. Is that too far out? If somebody wanted to go all natural wild yeast, that could, yeah. that could be achievable by November. So that's, yeah, it's five months. That's a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know it's a long time, but I, I'm kind of leaning towards that as well. I, I suspect that some of us will be aiming for things that are done quicker, um, but that leaves it open for people that want to do something that takes five months, um, like maybe a wild ferment that was just mentioned or something like that. Um, well, we, we might have too much similarity if we close the time window up too much. Well, I guess the question then becomes, is anyone planning to do a wild ferment? I, I just I threw that out as a suggestion. I'm not planning on doing it for this one. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about it because there's there's a I live around a lot of corn farms, a lot of sweet corn, so I can just buy it like fresh. And I don't know, it's a little sketch, but I don't know. <laughs> I've done worse with wild ferments, I guess. Um, okay, yeah, we'll see. Just so I yeah, understand, like we're basically each of us are selecting one of the three and making our uh, meat out of that particular one and then getting back together later on with the results of our effort. Is that is that what I'm hearing? Using all three. All three. Uh, all, all The whole all gamut. Three. Now, you, mm -hmm. could, you could just lightly dry hop with some corn if you don't. <laughs> 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 if you don't want to use that. <laughs> Uh, but no, I imagine I, between now and November, I'm going to have several different ways of it doing. I think the goal would be to 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 try and use all three, if at all possible, and really, hopefully, everybody goes in such a different direction that we can show the real <laughs> flexibility of a pretty wild mm -hmm. set of ingredients. Oh yeah, okay. you make a good salsa. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that little window into our brainstorming process. It was a lot of fun. We had some great laughs, great conversation on that Zoom call. And now, again, check out the playlist in the description here. Videos will be released all throughout the week on this Great Mead project, 10 videos in total. Plus, again, a week from today, we'll have the wrap up video come out where you can see us all discuss our pros and cons and, you know, general experience with the Great Mead Project. Thanks for tuning in. Cheers and happy brewing.